In the simplest context, your job as a data analyst is to solve problems. And you are going to be solving this problem by making use of data, either finance data or business data or medical data, any data from a specific source. Now, there are a couple of steps that actually lead to how a data analyst can actually use data to solve a problem. The first step is to collect your data set. Uh, the second step is to actually clean this data set. The third step is to analyze this data set. And the fourth step is to make a report. The fifth step is to visualize and make a conclusion. Now, after cleaning your data set, the next few steps that leads to you analyzing your data set and also trying to visualize and make a conclusion from that data set is going to be making use of one or two types of statistical analysis techniques. Statistical analysis is the usage of statistical techniques and methods to actually draw insight and conclusion from a data set. In this video, I'll be talking about statistical analysis and the type of statistical analysis we actually use, not only in data analysis, but in analysis in general. So I'll be starting with the first and the most popular type of statistical analysis, and that's the concept of descriptive analysis. Take a look at the word descriptive analysis. It comes from the word describe, descriptive. And in simple terms, it is a technique in statistics that we use to describe and summarize our data sets. It's basically split into two parts. We have what we call the visual measure and we have the numerical measure. So under the visual measure, we are going to be using um, graphs and uh, tools and tables to actually tell you a story about our data sets. This is where we use details like the bar charts, the pie charts, the histogram, the box plot and whisk just to mention a few to actually tell a story about our data set and under the numerical measure that itself splits into two we have the measure of central tendency aka the measure of location which actually helps us to tell a story about the center of our data set we have the mean we have the median and we have the mood and the second part of the numerical measure is what we call the measure of dispersion which consists of the mean absolute deviation the standard deviation the variance the interquartile range just to mention a few and this this part of the numerical measure under descriptive analysis actually help us to tell us how spread out, how wide our data set is. So the visual measure and the numerical measure all make up descriptive analysis. The descriptive analysis can actually be performed on any of the tools you want to use to perform your analysis, either uh, Excel, IBM SPSS, R, Python, SQL. You know, performing descriptive analysis using Excel, SPSS, R is actually quite easy. If you are using Excel, just click on the descriptive tab and then it actually helps you to give details that summarize your data set. And if you're actually working on R or Python, just use a simple code and boom, you have all the details that actually describe your data set, both numerically and in the visual context. The next type of statistical analysis that is kind of similar to that of the descriptive analysis is what we call the exploratory data analysis, EDA for short. Now, the exploratory data analysis, as the name implies, is just basically used to explore your data set. It's more or less like a bird eye view into the data set. You are not going to start performing proper analysis with your EDA, but you are going to like have like this view of what the data set looks like from the outside, okay? Uh, I see the EDA as an advanced version of the descriptive analysis in the sense that descriptive analysis ends with uh, mean, medium, mode, variance, and all of the bar charts, pie charts, the histogram. The exploratory data analysis, the EDA, actually go as far as talking about the skewness, the courtesies, the distribution, the momental skewness. It can also try to see patterns that the variables that make up that data set actually uh, have or they exhibit. And in the long run, it might make a simple comment or simple remark regarding the data set. Oh, it can be like this data set is actually left skewed. This data set is actually right skewed. Oh, it has this value of courtesies. It has this value of skewness. This is actually a normally distributed data and stuff like that. So I see EDA, aka the exploratory data analysis, as um, as a descriptive analysis on steroids. Okay, so they are actually kind of similar. People, in fact, actually uh, mistake them. Okay, and feel like they are actually the same thing, but. 
in the long run you will realize that these two guys are quite similar but eda is like a better version of descriptive statistics so whenever you get your data set and you want to like just start analyzing the first step i advise you to do is to perform eda and at the same time you are also performing your descriptive analysis now the next type of statistical analysis i'll be talking about is the inferential analysis and this is the branch of analysis that actually uses a sample data to actually make inference regarding a population data under this branch of analysis we are going to be making conclusion regarding our data set and in the center of inferential statistics we actually have hypothesis tests. in the center of hypothesis tests, we have a lot of statistical tests we have a couple of steps that you must actually take before you can actually perform a proper hypothesis test i actually have a video where i talked about a couple of statistical tests that is used in hypothesis test and when to use this test you might actually want to check out that video i'll be linking it right here you can actually watch that after watching this video under the concept of statistical inference we are going to be having the likes of hypothesis test that is the one sample t test the one sample z test we have the chi square we have the ANOVA we have the correlation analysis we have the two-way ANOVA we have the ANCOVA we have the MANOVA we have the whole of the confidence interval the job of the inferential analysis is to actually use a sample data to make inference on a population data to draw out conclusion and the basis of the inferential statistics is based on just two sentences we have the null hypothesis and we have the alternative hypothesis and everything begins from there now let's talk about the next type of statistical analysis and that is what we call the predictive analysis now as the name implies predictive analysis it simply means you are trying to predict something from the other you are trying to forecast you are trying to guess a value the whole of predictive analysis is actually dependent on the concept of regression so i've actually made a couple of videos regarding regression i'll be linking them in the top right corner and also in the description but under the regression we are going to be using a single variable to predict another single variable or we are going to be using multiple variables to actually predict a single variable we have several types of regression from the simple linear regression to the multiple linear regression to the logistic regression the binary logistic we have the uh, the Bayesian linear regression and all of that I've actually shot a video on the types of regression that we have in statistics in general and in machine learning you might actually want to check that video out I will also link that right here after watching this video the concept of predictive analysis is actually done more in time series in forecasting and when you build machine learning models now we are tending towards the end of the analysis as a whole okay now the last type of analysis is what we call the prescriptive analysis and as the name implies we use this type of analysis to actually prescribe uh, a solution so the prescriptive analysis is more or less like a joint effort of the exploratory analysis uh, the eda for short rather the descriptive the inferential the predictive so when you've used all of the other type of analysis statistical analysis to actually uh, you know work on your data Set, then you now come back to prescriptive and make a conclusion and prescribe a solution to the problem at hand it simply means that the prescriptive analysis does not really have a specific technique that defines it because it's like a melting pot for all of the analysis that we've been doing from the beginning down to where we are so everything all ends with the prescriptive analysis and it starts with the descriptive analysis we have two other types of uh, statistical analysis we have what we call the mechanistic analysis and we have the causal analysis the mechanistic analysis is basically used to understand the exact changes in variables that leads to other changes in other variables it is basically applied in physical and engineering sciences in situations that requires high precision and little room for errors and for causal analysis it is actually a process for identifying and addressing the causes and effects of a challenge or problem so instead of addressing the symptoms of a problem causal analysis helps to identify the root cause so that these symptoms or those symptoms rather become less impactful causal analysis is actually the field of experimental design and statistics pertaining to establishing cause and effects relationship and these are the type of statistical analysis that we actually use in data analysis and any other type of analysis in general if you actually learned something new from this video and you also enjoyed this video i would really appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel 
do you have some questions for me or you feel like i missed something please go down to the comment section and drop your questions i'll be willing and ready to attend to all of them thanks for making it to the end of this video do you want to become a data analyst and you don't know where to get started i have a video on how to become a data analyst you can actually check that video right here and if you need a statistical playlist that can help you kick start your data analysis journey i also have a video right here that you can actually check out Thanks for making it to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Mm.